Another one of his titles is the fact that he possesses the highest levels of morality. The highest level of morality that anyone could imagine. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces him as the best role model. He says, Uswatun Hasana. Rasulullah gave a beautiful role model that humanity should follow. This is a little bit about the description about Rasulullah in the Holy Quran. Each of those we could speak about on and on for lectures, not a discussion in one session. Nevertheless, in one of the ayahs, I want to focus about the relationship of this messenger, the, 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 mercy, the merciful messenger, the messenger of mercy, Nabi Yurrahman, the Nabi Yika Nabi Yurrahman, Dua Qawassul, he is referred to as the, the messenger of mercy, the prophet of mercy. This, uh, the relationship of this messenger to his ummah, or how he, how he is toward his ummah, toward his people. Again, when we look at the titles, it, uh, it speaks for itself. When he is rahmatan lil alameen, obviously towards his ummah, he is nothing but Mercy is a mercy to the world, let alone his own people. And therefore you'll find that Rasulullah during his life he displayed the most kind, the most merciful, the most loving, the most understanding, the most tolerant individual who you could ever imagine. Towards his own man, and I'll come to the Ummah eventually and we'll understand who the Ummah of Rasulullah is. And that is where we will understand why he needed the big heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes that he made your heart so big. Why he needed such a big heart will find his Ummah his mercy towards his ummah was not limited to a certain group of his ummah. Because if you start looking at the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll find that it's many groups. And his rahmah that was in fact encompassing all the worlds, rahmah al when it came to his ummah, was so special towards every one of their group, these groups. Every one of them. Not towards one rather than the other. It was towards every one of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran about the mercy of Rasulullah towards his ummah specifically. He says, Surely a messenger has come to you. What kind of messenger? One of the important things that we need to understand about him is that he is one of us. He is an insan. Don't start making him something other than insan because God intended for him to be insan so you and I can relate to him. God wanted him and God declared in the Holy Quran that if there were people, if there were angels walking on earth, he would send an angel as a messenger to them. Therefore, because it is humans who walk on earth, God sent a human to them. But obviously not an average human. A human that God chose because he purified, God chose him and further purified him. God selected him, he is Al-Mustafa, and he is Al-Mushaba. I'm not using uh, this as an opportunity here. Al-Mustafa, some of you may not realize why, but then nevertheless. Al-Mustafa, the chosen, of the people. Al-Mushaba has another thing to it. It's Shabah in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously, all of his children possess his beautiful attributes, and therefore some of them were given these titles. Yes, I know Imam Hassan was given the title of al -Mushar. However, Rasulullah was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and described as 
the one who is chosen from the Sifa, and also described by their Ishiba, what Sharab Rabbi. Meaning what? Meaning any kind of impurities that we could imagine, God kept away from them. There's a very important point that we have to make here. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذِّبَ عَنْكُمُ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَهَّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا Allah It's not that they were not pure and God purified them. We need to be pure. They purified. God kept it away from them. Guaranteed and clarified to everyone that they are pure. This is a confirmation, further confirmation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he possesses the beautiful attributes of being chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being purified and kept away from any impurity by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is definitely there for him, however he's a human in the sense that every one of us should aspire to be like him. That he's, a, he's an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Holy Quran that the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should be in the middle. And, you know, the middle path. Balance. Not extremes. They don't go to any extreme. No across, neither across nor tafri. So no extreme from either way. They don't uh, proceed beyond, beyond Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they don't fall behind. They're wasat. Ummatan wasat. In there he says, لِتَكُونُ شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا So that you are, for the people, examples. People can watch you and learn from you. The Ummah. This is the special Ummah of Rasulullah. Levels of the Ummah of Rasulullah. We'll come to that. And the Prophet is their example for those special group of the Ummah of Rasulullah. Therefore, he is him and Muslim. He's from you. In fact, this is one of the miracles of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Surah Al Jumu'ah, we read Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walla ta'ata fil umidina rasula minhum. When it comes to that, they say that this is one of God's miracles. He is saying that from these people, let yet look at the difference. From the same people, with the same desires, with the same weaknesses, with all the things that humans have, yet when he purified, he reached a level that he became the teacher of all, the mercy to all, the purifier for all. So this is men and possible. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Azizun alayhi ma'anidhun. This is something very special about it. That whatever you suffer as people, as the Ummah of Rasulullah, every one of us, whenever we suffer, the Prophet is in pain. It's hard on him. It's heavy on his heart. Azizun alayhi ma'anidhun. He cares so much for you. Haris is used, it could be used in a positive context or negative context. If one has hurts for worldly things, it's negative. If one has hurts for godly things, it's positive. So for instance, in Arabic, if somebody, they say someone is haris about money and things like that, it could be seen as a negative action. Because he cares so much about these things, about monetary things. The Prophet wasallam, his curse was for who? For you, for the people, for his own life. Haris on alaykum. And also God continues to describe him once again, bil mu'mineena. He is Rahmatan lil Alameen. He is the mercy to the world. But he is specially merciful towards the believers. And very kind and loving towards the believers. 
this is amazing because it is it is telling us that the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the real Khalifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The real Khalifa. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. They have an element of general mercy and specific mercy, special mercy. Although they are meanings that we cannot really fully understand. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Yeah, we can't fully understand. However, it is suggested that one of them is more general and one of them is more specific towards the believer, the, the believers. You'll find that his messenger is also rahmatan lil in general for all the world, but specifically and specially merciful towards the mu'mineen, towards the believers. This is Rasulullah sallallahu Very caring, very loving, very kind. It hurts him. Azizun alayhi ma alitum. What does that mean, Azizun alayhi ma alitum? Only physically? Or is that something that is so significant or important? I want to share something that I shared with a group of uh, an interfaith a group that were, in fact, having a session about um, health and life in life of scripture. Different scripture. That was the problem. And so one of the priests that was participating, his focus was about how Isa alayhi salam, Jesus used to be upon him, he healed, he healed the blind, people with skin conditions, people who were born with certain diseases, he healed them, he was a healer. And so he said, we as the church, we focus on healing, so we established hospitals and so on now. We're taking it with, uh, on, from the positive perspective, although a lot of it could be financial as well. Nevertheless, we look at the positive side of it, which is okay, we do, and uh, servicing the community as uh, Isa alayhi salam was. Nabi Allah Isa alayhi salam, that was his miracle. The healing aspect was his miracle. But that's not why he was sent. None of the Anbiya were sent to heal us physically. They were sent to heal us spiritually, to revive us as insan, as a human being. And so I shared with them the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes his messenger. He says, if you follow God and follow the messenger of God, what happens as a result? Uh, you need to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you follow God and His Messenger, what happens? Istajibu lillahi wa lil rasuli idha dahakum lima yuhyikum. Gives you life. Answer the call of God and His Messenger when they invite you to what gives you life. Isa alayhi salam and Allah, all of them, including. And most significantly, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Their focus was not to heal somebody from some blindness or some physical ailments, although these may have been there for them as means to help and as means to show and prove their message, their message or their wilaya of the Imam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He asked the Imam, are you not the wali of Allah? He said, yes. He says, can you heal my eyes? The Imam wife are over it. Abu Wasir says, for the first time, I was able to see. I saw the sunlight, I saw the, the colors, I saw things. And for the first time, then he, the Imam asked me, he says, would you like to have that special, special treatment on the day of judgment because you missed out on some blessing of vision? On the day of judgment, would you like that special treatment or would you like average treatment like everybody else and you have your vision? He says, no, I want a special treatment. So they not watch again and I will see you. He chose for himself to continue this life without his vision, the physical vision. And he 
to that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him, and many like him, grants them a real vision. It's not about seeing with your eyes if you can't see the reality. It's not about living this physical life if, if you're not living as a man, as a human being. That is what matters, and that is the concern of Rasulullah. Therefore, Azizun alayhi ma'anetum, it is telling us that he cares for us when we are suffering in terms of spiritual. If one is far from God, the Prophet hurts. If one commits a sin, the Prophet hurts. It hurts him. The Imam of our time today, when any of us commits a sin, the Imam is hurting. Perhaps he's crying. That is what we know of them. They care. The Prophet cares about his people. And most significantly, Aziz alayhi ma'anetum spiritually. And therefore, it's telling us this side of the Prophet is for everybody. Meaning what? Aziz alayhi ma'anetum. If somebody is suffering spiritually, does it tell you that this person is amongst the top of the good believers? Or is it someone who could be sinful and suffering and far? If that's the case, and you'll find that the Prophet cares about them, that brings us to the next issue or the next this description, the Ummah of Rasulullah. The Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, despite what many of us think and many suggest, includes everyone. The Ummah of Rasulullah includes all of the people his time on everyone. You'll ask me, does it mean those who deny him? Yes. Does it mean those who ridicule him? Yes. Does it mean those who don't believe in him at all, believe in other messengers or deny God altogether? Yes. It includes all of them. That's the Ummah. And that is this, the area of concern and love and care and the fact that he empathizes and he's heard when all of these people are on the wrong path. Any of them. The proof from his life, his words, and the life of the Imam of Ahlul Bayt, you'll find proof after proof. An example, very famous example, during the life of Rasulullah early on, when he had to escape or take a break from Mecca and went to Ba'ath. Ba'ath, he had some uncles or relatives there. He thought maybe I have a break from the people of Mecca and then he get some support from the people of Ba'ath. Yet, the people of Mecca already warned the people of Ba'ath or some of the elite in Ba'ath that your position will be and stay, will be at risk if you accept him. Because he says that people are equal, there are no classes. He says, just like you are a human, the slaves that you have are also humans, they have rights, which they didn't have in their society. And so they warn the people of Ba'ith, they mobilize the youth and the children to go and attack him, harm him. They chase him out of the city with rocks and all sorts of sticks and rocks, which is humiliation and disrespect. And so he left the city with a few people. One of them says, I watched him, he was reciting something. And I thought he must be praying and asking God to punish these people because that's what I thought they deserved. And I came closer to listen to him only to hear him saying, Allahumma the awmi fa'inna humdala. Oh my Lord, guide my people. He says, my people, how me? Because they don't know. They don't know any of that. This is what they know. This is what they believe. They think it's all about fear. They think it's all about their position. They think it's all about their wealth. They think it's all about their status. This is all that they care about. They, they, this is all they know. They're straight, yes. 
They're listening to shaitan, yes. They're listening to their whims and desires, yes. He still calls them out me, my people. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is how he looks at his people. Now we come to the way the Ummah should be. In terms of how he is towards the Ummah, I don't know if we have any time for it. Another example I'll give from the life of his cell next to Rasulullah, and you will be Salaam Therefore, opposition of Imam Hussein 
This is where he was. Another example. In Karbala, there was one whom every time people mention him and narrators speak of him, they call him as an Nasrani. Meaning what? The Christian. Yes. The Imam pardoned him. Personally went to visit his family and gave a message to his mother that the, the grandson of Rasulullah is asking for your help. Specifically. SubhanAllah. And he said, congratulations to this man. Don't you and I wish that we were ones that our Imam, the Imam of our time, would send a specific message for us. I need, I need you for a mission. Recite the Ahl In there we say, وَالْمُسَارِعِينَ إِلَيْهِ فِي حَوَادِهِ Make me, Ya Allah, every morning recite it and say that. Make me, Ya Allah, amongst those who hasten towards the fulfillment of the need of the Imam of our time. وَالْمُسَارِعِينَ إِلَيْهِ فِي طَلَاهِ حَوَادِهِ Make us amongst them. So that he comes to us. Yes, the Imam comes to the people. Imam Hussain came to Wahab al Nasrani and asked for his mother to give him the message that the grandson of Rasulullah is asking you, yes, he's a Christian. It didn't matter. The Imam targeted him and he joined him. This is the vision and the mission and the sign and the mercy of Rasulullah and his family. Now, final one is some of the characteristics of the special Ummah of Rasulullah. We said the Ummah is all. Therefore, as the followers of Rasulullah our love should be for all. Our love, not tolerance. You know, they teach you tolerance. Yeah, we have to be tolerant in this society. It's beautiful to be tolerant, it's beautiful. But it's not as beautiful as the teaching of the Prophet and his family, sallallahu alayhi wa Because they tell us to be loving, not tolerant. Tolerant, it's just that you are bothered by something, but you're tolerating it, yes? It's bothersome, but it's okay. Yeah, we're tolerant. The Prophet was not tolerant, was loving. Yes, he loved his neighbor who used to put garlic at his door. He loved him. Not because he put the garlic at his door, but because he is loved by the Almighty God, by the Creator. And because through love you can invite people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is through kindness, through love. He loved them. This led love to them, they came to him. His attraction was through love. And therefore, when we recite the ayah and began with this ayah, Muhammad Rasulullah Allah. Walladina ma'ahu, those who are with him, yes, if somebody is fighting them, if somebody, and this gap so far here is people who are fighting them, denying Rasulullah and fighting the believers, they are firm. But if not, Ruhama Raina. Ruhama, they have mercy amongst each other. Does it only mean mercy towards those who believe in God and the Messenger? Believe me, if we start making, you know, making exclusive clubs and excluding people, we'll end up us and not no one else. You know, somebody invited someone and was teaching him about Islam and the school of Ahlul Bayt and so on. So that person eventually became convinced that, okay, this is true. I want to follow it. So what do I do? He said, hold on a second. Yes, Shia. Not all the Muslims, you become a Muslim, you have to become a Shia. But hold on a second, you have to choose which side. We have this school and that school. And then we have amongst this school, we have this marga and that marga and that marga. And you have to choose this marga, not, not no one else. And I'm, if you are following this marga, it should be this way, not this way. Some certain things you have to be careful of. He kept on going, the man said to him, just tell me, I'll follow you. Why are you bothering me so much? Sometimes we make it this now. Only the way I believe. If somebody has any different, different opinion or style in their faith, we them. This is not a school of 
Imam Ali alayhi salam, when he gave his letter to Malik al Hashar, he says to him, Make your heart feel the love for the people. Ash'ar al Let your heart feel the love of the people. That's why he says to him, because they are either your brother in faith or equal in humanity. Meaning what? Love them despite their faith. It doesn't mean love them only if they are followers of Ahl al If they are, you love them because of that, you gain a special status of muhibbi muhibbihim. This is a special status that includes us in the dua for the lovers of Ahlul Bayt and the lovers of the lovers of Ahlul Bayt. There's a special dua for those people and a special status for those people. You get that special status for that. Muhibbi muhibbihim for that sake. Because somebody loves Ahlul Bayt, I love them. That is a special position. But I love them because they are God's creation. They are equal to me in the fact that they were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the followers of Rasulullah should be. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Only excludes those who are fighting you. You obviously cannot do what some suggest that you know you must. We were merciful, we were peaceful in the time of the Imam of our faith. There was a school that developed. And their, their thing was, we were peaceful, we, we stay neutral and everything. And, and somebody says, what if they, somebody attacks you? Oh no, we don't attack back. What if somebody attacks your family? Oh, uh, well, shame on you in that position. If you have no shame whatsoever, no rila whatsoever, then obviously, I should die on the family. The circle should be very wide. Followers of Rasulullah, their hearts should be big. And this is what this should be our common and regular dua. The Prophet reached that. You and I should ask for that. Yes, sir. I mean, if we ask Allah to grant us the opportunity to be amongst the sincere lovers and followers of Rasulullah and his family. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the mercy that He granted His Messenger and the purified families of His Messenger to be merciful to the believers and merciful to the lovers of the Prophet and his family, to be loving to all and to be inclusive our ways with the people, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the opportunity to listen to what's said and follow what's best. Before I finish once again, I ask Muminina Muminina to remember the family of the bride and the groom that are also celebrating and providing the walima of tonight, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pray for them and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them a blessed union and blessed family through this union, inshallah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant their ancestors and their parents and those who passed away from their families abundance of His mercy as well as the Mu'mineen and Mu'minat present in this gathering. Grant all of our Mu'mineen abundance of His mercy and the reward of Al-Fatiha. Salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali.